So let's talk about IK. Uh, originally when I got into Blender and I started working with, with IK, I did a few experiments with something using uh, bendy bones that was workable but not too easy to set up. But to uh, make things a little easier, I did find another way to do it using some of the techniques I used before. So you can get a combination of IK and you can get a little bit of stretchy out of it as well. It's a very easy setup, uh, very easy to maintain, and really easy to access once you start setting up control shapes. So let's start with joint placement. So first of all, I'm just going to uh, hide my existing joint structure here. Just like I had to do this some stretch, some stretch, and let's see, I'll see reset position of all that stuff. So it resets the position of my geometry. And also it's the transparent mode, just making it a little bit easier to see where we're placing joints here. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is create an armature. Shift A, create your armature. It creates a bone at the world origin. And usually I'll go into edit mode by pressing tab and then go to the properties for that bone and I'll rename that one bone and I'll call that my roots or my main. So then I will take that bone, I will shift D to duplicate it. And I'll usually start building out like a, let's say a cog and, or center of gravity. And then I'll extrude out a hip, a central hip Of course, you want to label everything you create so you can maintain organization as you move forward. Now, for the leg itself, I'm just going to duplicate this joint. Now, the leg, I will make sure that it's sort of a free, flo free floating structure so that I can actually change the width of the hips and things like that without scaling. I can translate some things, rotate some things gives you a lot more options when it comes to uh, deformation. But to make my leg, I'm going to take that bone that I just made, I'm going to move it over and just try to center it in that leg in the front view first. So where do I want it to be? Let's say around, just around, let's say here for now. And then I'll go to my side view. I'm going to take the tail of this. I'm going to pull it all the way down to my ankle. I can make sure everything lines up properly there. And again, I'll check that from the front. That looks good. Check from the side. Looks good. Okay, so that's pretty good, but that's not going to bend because it's just a straight, uh, it's a single bone. So we need another bone in there. So I'm going to right click on that bone. I'm going to subdivide it. So it splits it into two. And then we get our second bone. Now, to get, the, get this pivot, this joint, into the right position, I'm going to set my move into normal mode. I'm going to press G to move and Y, because Y always flows along the uh, joint axes from basically end to end. And it makes it a little easier to reposition your bones without causing any sort of uh, issues with the orientation or, in this case, the preferred angle of our knee. We're going to make sure this, these two joints always stay perfectly straight in our front view so that when it deforms, it don't get any uh, odd wobble or wiggle or anything like that in our deformation which can cause issues for animation. So I'm going to now move this bone forward just a little bit so we can get our slight bend or preferred angle that's going to be used when the IK is applied. Now another thing you want to check out when you're actually creating bones is if you check you'll see there's a little bit of roll on your bone sometimes and that's easy to get rid of. You can select your bones and then just press Alt R uh, which will basically reset the, ro the roll on those bones. You can use the same command to reset uh, the rotation on controls if you want to zero them out. Just like if you want to zero out a move, you can press Alt-G and Alt-S for uh, defaulting scale back to its default. Just a couple of uh, nice handy tools built into Blender. So once you actually have your leg joints in place, I'm going to call this my thigh. 
dot left, and I'm going to do left uh, dot left for everything, just as we always want to do basically character left, not your left. Also, when we're actually ready to mirror things across, it's going to use the name of everything to uh, basically determine what's left and right and to relabel things and put things in the correct positions. So it's important to make sure that you are labeling everything precisely. Uh, short and to the point is my preferred method. Uh, only getting more robo uh, verbose if you actually need more specifics. So that's a pretty good position for my ankle and I'm going to extrude out to get sort of the ball and then extrude again. So I can get sort of the base of my toe here. And we'll call that final. Okay, so again, come in, rename things. Make sure you name everything. I was going to create sort of a reverse roll, a foot roll setup. This is something I definitely want to do to make sure that nothing gets confused. So I'll select everything, name it correctly, or according to its purpose, which is ideal. This is going to be my toe, so toe, uh, toe left, that's good enough. It's more of the toe root because I've got little digits here, so I'm going to call this my toe root. Okay, so, now usually what I'll do here is I'm actually going to use this to create also uh, K structure. Right now it's have the FK bones and these are basically going to be the ones that I actually skin to. Uh, my IK bones are usually bones I use to control my FK structures uh, while they're functioning in IK. So those bones I will usually not have any deformation influence when it comes to skinning. So I'm going to select my thigh and my knee and I'm going to shift D to duplicate those joints. And I'm going to focus on those in my my outliner. As you can see, they're here. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to relabel my thigh, my second thigh left. I'm going to call it my thigh IK dot left. And my knee IK dot left. Now, unlike the other joints, I'm going to come down to their properties, the bone properties, and disable deform. Now, you can also select multiple joints and enable or disable deform by going to armature, bone settings, and then deform. And then under your contact collection uh, bone set settings here, you can choose to disable. And so disable every joint, not just like one of the joints that you have selected. So we'll do all of them. So it does, as you can see, selected bones. Okay. And so now they're both disabled. So they won't, when you actually do your skinning, they won't cause any sort of a uh, conflict. Now, often what I will also do here is just to make it a little easier for me to visually select things in screen or even to show things in screen, I'll come over here to my skeletal structure and I'll switch it over to B-bone. Now, I'd usually do B-bone because actually I can then come in, select my IK uh, bones, and actually can change the scale on those bones. It's under the bone settings, uh, bendy bones, and you just have display size. And also, I believe it is also in your armature settings. And let me see, transform, and here we go scale bone. You can use that to help you scale your bones. Uh, I did set up a keyboard command for it, control up arrow. So I can just quickly do it without having to dig into the menus. And so now you can see my IK bones and my FK bones. Okay. Now to continue with the IK bones, I need to create a control at least to drive my leg. I'm just going to select, I selected the bone here in the ankle, and I just extruded a new bone out of it. And I'm going to right click on that bone and clear parent selection. I'm going to rename that bone, and we'll call that our, uh, I'll call it my leg IK dot left. 
And of course, we want to make sure that that one also does not deform. So no skinning on that one either. I'm going to scale that one out just to make it stand out a bit more. Okay. Okay, so that's going to control our IK leg. And we need one more for a pull vector. So extrude, pull that along the Y. Again, right click, parent, clear, clear parent. And I'm going to pull that one forward again. We're going to bring that one out so it's in front of the foot to a certain extent. And see, it's perfectly aligned, perfectly in front of the leg. This is why we're actually doing these from specific positions. So that the alignment matches our knee and matches our ankle. And notice I did not pull the one out for the leg because we want to its pivot to basically be aligned with our the bottom of our legs there. Okay, so again, checking it, disable the form, rename, and I'll call that one my knee aim dot left. Okay. And so now we're start we're ready to do a few things to set up our IKs. But actually before I do that, let me take my pull vector or my knee aim. I'm going to take my knee aim, I'm going to parent it to my leg IK, maintaining offset, so that when I move my leg, my pull vector will always be somewhere in the area. I'm going to take my leg IK, I'm going to parent it to my root, so that it will, by default, follow the entire rig around when I move my root but it'll be independent of the rest of the rig. Okay, so now we're ready to go in and start setting up our IK. And so we want our IK joints to start deforming. So I'm going to switch to pose mode. And with our knee selected, we can press Shift I to create a new IK. And it creates a new IK, and then you come over to your properties under bone constraints, and you see we have an IK now. And if I go to target, and I can choose armature, which is basically the name of our joint structure right now. You can rename your armature to make it more specific, like if it's for a specific character, like I have one that's called the Armature Amalia for a character I have named Amalia. But this one's just our. IK test. So I'm going to come in under bone. I'm going to choose my IK, my leg IK left, because that's going to control the entire leg. And then we need to set up the pull vector for the same armature. And we want the knee aim left to control our pull vector. Now, one thing with your bones, you want to make sure that you specify the chain length. What is the chain length? The chain length is equal to the number of joints you want to, to basically influence uh, from the end to the beginning. Okay, so in this case it's two because we want to control the knee and the thigh. So I'm just going to type in two. And we also have our pull vector set up. Now if you actually look from the front, you can see that it's rotated to the side and that's because of the pull vector. So we need to make sure that we specify the pull vector angle. In most cases, when I'm creating a structure, it's usually going to be negative 90 degrees to correct the angle of our knee. And we can come in and test it just by grabbing our leg IK left control. And if I pull it, you can see it's actually deforming our IK structure perfectly. Okay, and so now we need these, these bones to also control our FK. So fairly simple, select your IK bone, so shift select the FK bone, control shift C on the keyboard, and choose copy rotation. And it'll basically add a bone constraint to our FK, so it's now being driven by our IK. Or at least by the IK bone, should I say. And you want to do the same thing with the thigh. So IK thigh, shift select FK thigh. You can also do it over here from the add bone constraint, but I'll usually do control shift C, copy. And I do a, a control shift C and copy and from there because when you actually add it using that command, it automatically plugs things in where it need to be. If you manually add a bone constraint to a joint, you usually gonna have to plug in everything yourself, like the target and the bone, 
Um, and of course you can come in and make modifications to how it's copying the weights over. Uh, let's say let's say you have two bones overlapping that have a different orientation. You can come in, fool around with the orientation, uh, the targeting, until you get the bones functioning the way you want. But usually by default, when you're duplicating the IK joints from the FK joints, their orientation matches, and so there's usually not a problem. Okay, so now if we test it, you can see that our FK bones are now rotating perfectly with our IK. Now we've got one more thing to set up. I just want to set up a little bit of stretchy, and so we need to go back in and start editing our bones again. Now, by default, usually what I'll do is I'll take my ankle, ball, and my toe, that end of the chain, and I'll parent it not, I'll detach it from the main FK structure, and I'll actually parent it into main uh, keeping offset into my, basically my IK leg control structure. Since I'm usually not using the FK to uh, drive the deformation, I will do that. Uh, if I am keeping it as FK, I will usually leave it where it is and then just work with it as is. Um, but often I'm not, I'm usually working with the IKs. And so now when I actually deform this, you'll see that our foot maintains relative orientation to our IK leg control, which is preferable in my case. Now, last thing. We want to add a little bit of stretchy to this uh, this knee here, to the FK knee. Okay, and so it's fairly simple to do that. Select your IK leg IK your leg uh, IK left, and then you want to select Control select the knee in the outliner, and then again. Control Shift C, we're going to stretch two. And so now, when the IK leg overextends, the FK will stretch to try and keep following. And this will also stretch the geometry of the leg. Okay? And that's pretty much the basic setup. Once you actually have it all set up, you can switch back to edit mode. Select all of the things on your left side that you have constraints on and everything else and then you can just right click and say symmetrize and it will mirror everything. Connections, it'll duplicate uh, constraints, everything to give you a perfectly mirrored setup. Okay, so that when you actually mirror your poses you can see that it's mirroring everything perfectly, left to right. And so that once you actually have everything set up, now one thing about the stretchy, notice how I've got the calves, they're stretching out a little bit. If I select my FK and I come in here, you can see there's an, there's an attribute called volume variation. Now, volume variation depending on how much you have it set at. If it's set, usually one is the default. It'll basically cause your geometry to collapse to mimic what would happen when it comes to the volume, you know, relative to the volume, if you were stretching something and it's basically elongating that surface. Now, usually I don't like it to collapse that much, which is why I usually set up to around 0.1. So you get a little bit of squash. You can put it up to like 0.2, depending on how much you want to get. And all of this stuff is keyable, so you can always go back and adjust it later or build it into the rig so that an animator can make any adjustments as they need. But it's very simple, works out nicely. Uh, since I don't use the FK a whole lot, it's much more handy to have a little bit of stretchy here in the IK. And so, yeah, it's very useful, very simple setup, and often much quicker than uh, many of the methods. Um, methods used in Maya. Um, of course, like in Maya, you want to create sort of a externalized controls. 
which is fairly simple. You can add colors and things like that. And that's mostly under our bone properties, like under viewport display, you can set like bone colors. And so you can make it a little easier to pop things out. You can also add custom shapes and you don't even have to create a whole bunch of them. You can just sort of, uh, let's say, switch yourself into object mode, create, let's say a circle. Doesn't matter what size or anything like that. Once you have the circle in there, come back to your bones, go into your pose mode. I can, let's say, select my bone, come over here and say custom object. And all I'll do is choose the object and it'll just pop a copy of it over there. The only thing you have to do is maintain the original. You can hide it, put it away someplace so it's never seen again. And you can add as many controls as you want and make adjustments to the size and the color and the shape and the uh, orientation just to make it a little easier to select controls when you're animating.